Hello there, welcome to this webinar on Teaching Contestable Markets, a whistle-stop tour of some resources aimed at supporting your teaching of the topic. Just before we start though, a quick reminder that we've got some revision workshops coming up soon, as we will be having throughout the whole year. The ones coming up in November, December though are called Strong Foundations, aimed at your Year 13 students, helping them uh, go through stuff that they would have done in their year one but applying it to the some of the skills that they're going to need for their final examinations we'd love to see you there okay thinking about contestability and thinking about what we're trying to achieve in this quick webinar we'll have a think about some of the concepts that make up a contestable market some of the characteristics we'll also have a think about how contestability can impact upon a market the way we'll do that then is I'm going to go through with you four perhaps five different resources aimed at introducing and testing that concept. Okay, let's think about contestable markets and what that means just for a moment. Quick definition for you there. Contestable market is one where we have a structure which has freedom of entry and exit. So for your year 13 student, that and exit might be the new part of the definition. So they've talked about freedom of entry before coming into a market, but now we're talking about a market that has freedom of entry and exit. Quick word of warning for you on the right hand side of the screen. Lots of examiner reports talk about confusion between contestable markets and competition within markets. So lots of students reading one word and assuming it means the other thing. Now, Clearly there is an element of competition within a contestable market, but just warn your students to read their exam scripts carefully, make sure they don't confuse those two words. Okay, ultimately then, with a contestable market, we're talking about that freedom of entry and exit, we're talking about how markets are impacted, not just by the level of competition within it, but also the potential for competition. In theory, all markets are contestable, they just have different levels of contestability so you have some markets which have close to zero contestability perhaps there's so much customer loyalty it's going to be difficult for any other firm to break into it to a market that's perfectly contestable that has no sunk costs and any individual firm could enter it and know that they'll have very little risk in doing so clearly the closer to that perfectly contestable stage of the spectrum the more our firms will be operating like, operating like they're in a perfectly competitive market. The spectrum then, if we give that spectrum to our students, explain the definition of contestability, talks about sunk costs as one of the main uh, examples of barriers of exit. Give them those five industries there, those five different businesses, where would your students place them on that spectrum? So before they've learned anything else about contestability, let's test what they know about those markets and where they think they might fit on that scale, just based upon the idea of freedom of entry and exit and sunk costs. I'd give my students a few minutes to do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to test the same exercise at the end, just to see whether students would come up with slightly different answers based upon some of the other concepts that we're going to cover. OK, we've got four resources for you. Let's start with this first one. So it's a paper-based resource on sunk costs. So you can see a quick screen grab of it there. Sunk costs then, if we just define that before anything else, any kind of cost that can't be recovered if the business decides to leave the industry. So that includes things like asset write-offs, any kind of closure costs or loss of business reputation. The task we're setting then is based upon these four different businesses. Hotel, chain, uh, courier service, dog room service, breakfast cereal manufacturer. Now, you can just set this piece of work for your students to get on with by themselves and ask them to do all four different businesses. We could do it as an in-class exercise and split the four different businesses up in your class, small groups, different tables, however you want to do it. When I was doing this exercise, I just split it up so students with the names uh, the first name to begin with the letter Z to G would do a budget hotel chain all the way through to those with the names T to Z would do the breakfast cereal manufacturer. Okay, allow them a minute, two minutes then to have a think about that question. What type of sunk cost could exist for the following business? So have a think about their individual example. Give them a minute or two to discuss and come up with some ideas. Okay, when I ask this question of a group of students, these are the possible answers they came up with. So introducing the idea of sunk costs, and let them have a think about how to apply that to individual businesses. The next part of this task then 
is the next part of the theory that relates to modern contestable markets. That why markets are becoming more contestable now is because businesses are looking for ways around those sunk costs. So what can we think of uh, as a method of getting around them? So again, second task is for you students to have a think about it. So there are four different types of barriers to exit, different types of sunk costs that students might have. Give them a few minutes then to think about ways of trying to get around those, ways of reducing those sunk costs. Here's the suggestions that came from the students who undertook that activity for me. Okay, there's the, the uh, worksheet again. The final question at the bottom there, I've asked you the first two. Uh, which of the above uh, markets is the most contestable? And justify your answer. So just asking your students to have a think about all four businesses and then having to think about that scale again, levels of contestability. Second concept we're going to look at then is this idea of hit and run entry and I've got another paper based worksheet for you. So with hit and run entry what we're talking about here is where a business will enter into an industry where they're trying to take advantage of any temporarily supernormal abnormal profits. So last year we might have discussed smartwatches for example which were beginning to, to grow in terms of their popularity. Other manufacturers around the world might have thought about it going into the market to compete with the likes of Apple and, and Samsung. This time then we're going to think about a brand new market, pretty brand, pretty new anyway, the home assistant market. And you've got two examples on the screen for you, the Amazon Echo and the Google Home. Now if you've not seen these devices before, have a look at them. They have no screens, they have no keyboards. Input and output, if you like, is purely by audio. So you ask the home assistant a question and it gives you an audio response. So the type of tasks you could ask, you could ask the, uh, the home assistant, what's the weather like to be today? Any kind of traffic congestion anywhere? Uh, ask it to repeat what's on your uh, calendar from your smartphone or any other kind of smart home activities like lights or heating. So that's the idea with these and I'm guessing ultimately we'll be having one of these in lots of our rooms around the houses so we've got that extra assistance as we're getting on with our daily tasks. The key to those home assistants and how useful they are is the sophistication of the search engines. So they need to be able to tap into information on, the, on whatever cloud they're using, whatever Wi-Fi based um, search engine that they're using in order to be able to give accurate answers to your questions. So the more sophisticated you can make that search engine, the more valuable the home assistant will be. Burgeoning growing market and one with potential for supernormal profits. Okay, first task on our sheet, very simple, asking your students what kind of tasks, what kind of activities they would like the home assistant to undertake. A little bit of a fun exercise, but again, getting them to think about how a market might grow as, it, as, as a product becomes more and more valuable and useful to customers. Second uh, task then, a little bit more real. What other firms do they think could enter in, could become one of those hit and run businesses entering into the market? So again, I'd be expecting my students to come up with answers like Apple, Samsung, Lenovo perhaps, uh, other major tech firms around the world. The third task links back to that idea of barriers of entry and exit again, what might exist, development costs of developing the, developing the uh, home assistant might be an example of something that um, might prevent a, uh, a company entering into the market, um, the, the cost of closing your factory down once the home assistant becomes less popular in the future might be uh, a barrier to exit. There's that three question task for your students. Okay, third one for us then, thinking about the impact of contestability on a market. So if we've kind of defined a couple of the concepts around contestability, sunk costs, hit and run, what's the impact of contestability? This time then we're going to use Uber as our case study. I'm sure you've heard of Uber and I'm sure most of your students will have done likewise, primarily relating to their introduction into the taxi service market. We know though that Uber, Uber sorry, are using some of their technologies to get into other markets like food delivery, package deliveries, carpooling in America uh, and water taxi services in Turkey. So Uber are looking to expand the use of their technology to get into new markets.
In fact, it has generated this new word, Uberization, the idea of, of a firm developing uh, greater peer-to-peer -peer transactions, allowing customers and suppliers to communicate more quickly, more effectively, reducing costs and improving services. First task for your students then is, what are the markets? What are yet to be tested by the technology that Uber have been developed? Where else could uh, a market benefit from that kind of peer-to-peer -peer transaction? Again, get your, think, think, get your students to think about a bit of application. Second task then is to think about, well, what about those markets that already exist that firms like Uber are moving into? What is the impact on them? How will they respond? So the likely answers here are relating to, to price and relating to quality of service, that existing uh, firms will have to find ways of trying to compete with Uber so that people still want to stay with them. Longer tasks in, in this exercise then, taking it beyond just that initial task of thinking about the impact on the market, to thinking about how we would illustrate on a diagram those different costs. So the rest of the, the sheets after those first couple of questions are relating to uh, where we would illustrate it on the traditional uh, cost and revenue curve. So where, for example, would be the point of revenue maximization if a firm was going down the route of revenue maximization? Where's the point of normal profits? Where is the position for allocative efficiency, for example? And all of these kinds of positions are more likely to occur for firms in a contestable market. So taking the, the exercise itself is taking you just a little bit step, a little bit further in terms of your understanding. Okay, last resource for you. Thinking about other factors that impact upon contestability and I've got these six further ones. After our sunk cost example, what other ones have we got? So for example, consumer loyalty, the higher the level of consumer loyalty for the existing firms, the more difficult it is for firms to enter into that market. The more regulations that exist, again, the more difficult it is to enter. Uh, if it's difficult to get hold of technology to produce things, difficult to get information for the suppliers, they're going to impact upon contestability as well as access to things like raw material and the skilled labour needed to be able to provide that service or, or make the product. So a little introduction to the other factors uh, alongside sunk costs. And that leads us on to our last resource for you then, something called contestability boxing. We use a combination of a paper-based resource plus a PowerPoint presentation. So you give your students two things. Along the bottom line there you can see uh, seven di different cards illustrating the different factors that impact upon contestability. And then our template on the right which is like a boxing ring uh, and again introducing this idea of a spectrum in terms of level of contestability. But now what we're saying is let's examine whether a market is highly contestable or highly incontestable based upon all of those different factors. So let's make a, a more complex uh, way of looking at the level of contestability within the market. So the PowerPoint presentation uh, presents the students with individual markets. You can see the one on the screen talks about high street banking. Then acts as a bit of a timer whilst your students place the cards on the table, uh, template, have a discussion with their uh, fellow colleagues, and have a think about where they would place those um, cards on the template. After the first example, click on the button on the PowerPoint uh, presentation move on to the next market to test levels of contestability there. Now it's a PowerPoint file so uh, it becomes editable you can change the market so you can see the six that are available on the downloaded version of the PowerPoint. You can also change where you think as a teacher the level of contestability for each of the different uh, categories would fit for those markets and then saying what you think is the likely outcome whether there's little contestability some contestability or is a highly contestable market. So you can adapt that resource for different markets and different levels of contestability. Okay, just back to our spectrum right at the end there then. So we asked our students to do that exercise, if you remember before we did our tasks. Now that they know a little bit more about contestability and some of those other factors, where would they put those five businesses now? They might put them in similar positions. They might change them a little bit now they've got some awareness of other factors involved. So I suspect they'll maintain high street banks as being relatively incontestable. Smartphones likewise, perhaps because of the cost of the technology. City walking tours, relatively contestable, very few sunk costs. 
uh, fast food restaurants again um, people are looking for new places to eat so perhaps a slightly lower level of uh, consumer loyalty and streaming videos again very little in the way of consumer loyalty people are looking for quality of the products there and, and will swap from one to the other so there's some suggestions for where those firms would fit on that spectrum okay all of these resources then uh, as well as the PowerPoint are available from our Facebook pages and will be available from our website so you can see those there don't forget to sign up to our daily digest to get some more resources and more ideas on how to teach various topics relating to economics uh, from the website and if you use Twitter please do sign up to our Twitter accounts the, the general tutor to you econ Twitter account as well as Jeff Riley and, and my own uh, Twitter accounts okay Thanks for listening to this. I hope you're going to find the resources really useful. See you again.